One important reason why fly fishing is such an effective technique is that it offers the potential to cover every inch of the water column, right the way up from the bottom to the top. For fish such as trout willing to feed anywhere in that water column and take an artificial lure, there is no more exciting nor efficient way of catching them. Unfortunately, most UK anglers associate saltwater fly fishing with shallow tropical shorelines. Elsewhere in the world, particularly in America, they see things very differently, targeting anything and everything from marlin and tarp on through to sharks successfully with the fly. It has to be said though that European coastal waters are less well blessed with species willing to do their feeding well up off the bottom, but there are some including mackerel, garfish, coalfish, shad and bass. And of course, this fellow, the pollock. Pound for pound, pollock are one of the UK's premier sporting prospects. Catching them on a fly rod simply takes the fighting abilities onto a whole new level. What's more, UK waters hold lots of pollock and coalfish well capable of pulverising many of the current IGFA World Fly Court tippet records. I know this because I currently hold an IGFA 8 pound tippet record with this coalfish taken off Cushendall, Northern Ireland. But this man here, Alan Everington, breaks IGFA records for fun. On the first occasion I fished with him, he betted the eight pound tippet record for Pollock three times in the same afternoon as part of a 40 fish haul, all on the fly. But then, as on this occasion, no claims are submitted, as on your mark skipper Ian Burrett operates a policy of returning all inshore fish taken on his boat without any exceptions, even national and IGFA world records. Under current IGFA rules, if a fish can be identified from photographs, it need not be retained, but it must be weighed on solid ground. So, as with this fish, every pollock Allen takes goes immediately back unharmed long before the boat is pointed back to the shore. The single most important lesson to learn about pollock fishing is never to strike at a taking fish. Let it take the lure and turn for bottom, and in the process, it should hook itself. According to Admiral Ian, <laughs> we should be just retrieving the fly here, just watching and hoping that a pollock's going to try and eat this sand eel. And I've been told I mustn't strike. Well, there's one pulling there, and I haven't struck, so I'm pretty good now. And it's still pulling. I can feel it just tugging on the end here, but it's... Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, but I struck. <laughs> But I thought I had him there he is again, look. Let, let the pollock set the hook. When the, when the fish dives, it will set the hook. You don't I've got to let the pollock set the hook. I don't believe there's a pollock here anymore. <laughs> I, I don't think they're pollock. I think it's something else that's pulling at the end of the yeah, fight. Yeah, there's a friendly diver down there. I think so. Now and again. <laughs> I can still feel occasional tugs. Look, there he is again. He pulled the tip of the rod, and I was told that that would hook them, but it didn't work. No, I'm going to try this time. But we've got a few bites. So, double hole with the velvet. Oh. Everybody still there? Look, we didn't get many over there at all. So now we're letting this. Oh, this, Jonah. Now we're letting this, uh, this fly, this fast thing can land it right down deep there. I'm not quite sure how long to leave it. If that tide's starting to pick up and you just pull it, for every pull all you're doing is changing the height of it. And it's that height change that's just triggering them to, to feed rather than the speed of the tree like so. There we go. And there's a fish on. Again, big flies, big fish. If you, if you're gonna, if you're gonna hit, oh, increase that. Yeah, that's a bit of fish as well, isn't it? Oh, nice, uh, oh that's what to do. I've just been, I'm striking these things, and I shouldn't have done it. Just increase the. Uh, 
Saltwater and freshwater fly fishing do share a lot in common, particularly if you are a river fisherman, but there are differences too which must also be taken into account. From a drifting boat, for example, you can cast if you want to. From an anchored boat, you won't have that choice and will have to cast. Throwing a weight 10 to 12 line on a breezy day can be hard work, so why not snake the line out through the eyes and let the drift of the boat straighten the line out for you? The main pollock grounds around them will lie very close to the shore in between 25 and 35 feet of water over some particularly heavy kelpie ground. But remember, Pollock are sight feeders more than happy to move up off the bottom to pick off a meal passing overhead. You don't have to get it right down to them every time. Weather conditions are another important consideration. What you definitely don't want is what we have here. Flat calm seas, bright sunshine and inshore pollock simply don't go together at all. Far better to have an overcast sky and enough breeze to cut up the water's surface and help push the boat along, allowing you to cover fish without having to strip the line back. But the faster the drift, the heavier the line required to get some depth. Only when you feel a fish nipping at the tail of the lure should you add in some extra pace to encourage a positive result. Wow, he's pulling hard. Just like you said, Ian, if you don't strike, they eventually dive into the kelp and hook themselves. It's not very big. This is here with a, and it's a 12 foot outfit, which is quite heavy but unless it's cast these heavy lines and they let us deal with the current here which can go up to 8 knots and essentially what we're doing is we're using the current like in traditional fly fishing you know when I fish in the river I can use the river current well here I can use the current that's running in the sea and it can work my fly and these flies are mainly copying sand yield pattern but, but also pike patterns tend to work well and what we've also got here is our ears and it's robust and it deals with the salt so it's, it's, it's going to keep going. And essentially, this heavy outfit allows us to get a fly down through the current. Here in the Muller Gallery, the Pollock Fishing Saint came in. There's some huge fish, we'll be getting double figure fish, and then we started catching these with Ian on sport tackle, um, which was great sport. And then we took it to the next stage when we started fishing for these fly outfits. And the best thing is, of course, when these pollock change, they take that sand deal straight back down into the, the kelp. So you've got to really hold on to them and they pull like, like nothing else really pulls. We've had some big fish here and, 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 and a, a measure of the world class fish that are, are here in the Muller Galloway is that the world record for a six pound line, world record for a six pound line is uh, just over four pounds in the egg for books. And we were getting fish regularly up to seven, seven and a half pounds and in fact one day, just for fun, we bought three eggs for world record. But what exactly is a tippet? According to the IGFA, it's at least 15 inches of monofilament which breaks at or below the breaking strain shown on the spool. As some of the cheaper monos will often break well beyond the quoted limits, it's preferable to buy one of the IGFA rated brands, as the tippet will be required for testing if a claim is made. Let's take a look at some six pound IGFA rated tippet mono in action, providing Finley Wilson here with some world record memories. What's the world record at the moment? Four pounds six. Four pounds six, that's a pound over. Beautiful. Well done. Alright, he's going back. Um, he's going to kill him and claim the record, but we'd rather put him back.